I should apologize, it should be myself and David Schneider. Uh, unfortunately, he's one of the people whose flights have been canceled due to the fog in London. Uh, so if I was going to tweet about that, I'd probably say, for fog's sake, um, hashtag awkward, um, but let's just crack on. Um, I, uh, my background is I've been a writer for about 10 years. Um, I used to work um, at, at MTV and in pop magazines where my um, journalistic achievements uh, included dancing with Shaggy. Um, this is uh, me here with the Venga Boys. Uh, so real sort of highbrow stuff. Um, but for the past few years, I've been uh, mainly tweeting for a living. Um, as uh, he mentioned, tweeting for brands and TV shows and a few celebrities and stuff. So I'm going to talk through uh, a bit about how I came to be tweeting for a living um, and how we set up this company, That Lot, making social content for lots of different brands um, and sort of go through some examples of the types of things that help you uh, attract more followers and boost your engagement and get more out of uh, Twitter and 140 characters. So I thought I'd start by giving a bit of background to Twitter itself. Um, it's often talked about as being the uh, sort of real-time soundtrack to the biggest moments, uh, like this one here when Obama announces four more years. It's, it's often as well, people love it because it offers you sort of a backstage uh, insight into some of the biggest events. This is the most retweeted tweet ever uh, from backstage at the Oscars. But um, one of the reasons I really love Twitter um, is also the puns. I'm a big fan of puns, like this one, seen as we're at Web Summit, um, update the force, Adobe One Kenobi. Um, and it's also about the little moments, the little quirky moments in life that, uh, where Twitter is often where they really sort of uh, come to life, like this one here. Uh, oh, wow, that it would have been hilarious, um, but uh, we will move on. It's also about, it's important to know the social network that you're on and not get confused. This is Lindsay Lohan uh, announcing, hello, Facebook. I think she kind of got the wrong idea there. Um, and uh, Brittany, who is doing something great. She's sharing, you know, she's uh, wearing a heart on a sleeve, which is a lot of what Twitter is about, but perhaps uh, asking if global warming is actually a good thing is maybe pushing that one step too far. Um, so for me, um, the Twitter thing uh, started the night, I'll go back, um, of the London riots. And when I just moved to Hackney in East London, across the road from a pub called The Dolphin. Um, I'm presuming most of you haven't been to The Dolphin pub, but um, it's kind of like the uh, Ibiza of East London. It's the place that you go and drink Jaeger bombs and dance to bad 90s R&B music till five in the morning. Uh, one of the rumors on Twitter that night was that The Dolphin was uh, on fire, that the rioters had got to it. I could see that it was fine, tweeted about it, and then people started replying with all kinds of filthy and hilarious stories. Someone was saying it was the only pub they've ever had sex in. Uh, I couldn't believe that The Dolphin Pub didn't have its own Twitter feed, so I decided to set one up. Um, it wasn't something that I had planned to live on beyond the next day. It was just uh, a bit of a joke. But by the following morning, it had over a thousand followers, and people seemed to be enjoying uh, talking to it. So I decided to keep it going and use it as a way to learn how to do Twitter. Other writer friends of mine had said for a while that I should get on there, um, so I decided to keep it going. And, um, and yeah, it's, uh, that's uh, very enjoyable on a big screen. Um, it, yeah, fast forward a few months and the dolphin was dipping its fins into matters outside of the uh, pub, such as um, the Olympics, when much to my amazement and amusement, this tweet about the athlete Katrina Johnson Thompson uh, went on to be one of the top three tweets of Super Saturday, the day when uh, uh, Team GB won all the golds. Um, and since then, it, uh, the dolphin has been among the top tweets or tweeters for a few other things, such as the uh, birth of the first royal baby um, and the Grammys. Um, and was uh, named, uh, it's, yes, won a few awards. I'll go back off that because that slide is too rude. But um, I guess the reasons for these things are twofold. It's been about tweeting as one of the types of people who go to the Dolphin pub, um, but a slightly exaggerated version, but it's also been about trying things from the feed that have set it apart from other Twitter feeds and helped it uh, gain sort of a lot of attention and quite a lot of followers. So on the back of some of the Dolphin pub's uh, achievements, I managed to uh, start getting asked to tweet for other people, such as uh, PG Tips. IKEA. Groan, I heard someone groan. Uh, Guardian Soulmates. 
L'Oreal Men Expert. Uh, Beats headphones and the voice. Um, when I took over the voices, social media, most other TV shows and um, BBC shows particularly had very sort of stale social, particularly Twitter, all sounded the same, all just posting to links on to watch the show again and stuff. But by putting a bit of love and care and attention into the tone of voice and trying out some of the things that I'd learned from doing the Dolphin pub feed, um, it managed to uh, break some BBC records. It was the highest number of followers um, and the highest engagement for a first series of a BBC show ever. Um, and a lot of that has been about um, thinking about the second screen. Um, now when people are watching sort of big entertainment shows, most of them are watching uh, with an iPad or a phone in their hand and they're tweeting along. And so it's important to try and come up with something that is interesting to do on social as well as what's happening on TV. This is one thing we did uh, that we came up with called Will Selfie. So we were getting people to pause the TV when Will I Am was on screen, take a selfie of them with Will, tweet it to us, and we were gonna, we'd retweet the best ones. Uh, this is some of the ones that we got. This, these girls giving him a kiss. Uh, this lady in her pajamas. Um, this lady with lots of glasses on. And um, we did it, and it trended um, for about two hours and brought in sort of thousands of followers and was just an example of how doing something different on that second screen can really cut through the noise. Um, and um, the voice Twitter account has sort of been responsible for a few career highlights. Um, because it's got a bit of a character to the account, um, quite a few people have said uh, nice things about the, sort of the, the tone of it, including Boy George, who uh, pronounced that it's clearly a queen running the account for uh, the voice. So pleased to say, here she is. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was around this time when I um, met uh, David Schneider, who should be here, um, and that would have been a nice picture of him. Um, but what, what David has, uh, how he's built a lot of his uh, followers has been around two things, really. One, because he was in uh, a few TV shows. Uh, it's also because some people mistake him for David Schwimmer from Friends. Um, but mainly it's because he's very good at uh, doing reactive comedy very quickly when things are trending. Uh, this, such as this one, this is his uh, most successful tweet to date. Lance Armstrong isn't the worst offender in cycling history. Look at this guy, what the hell, uh, what the hell is he on? And then tweeted this. Um, and uh, yeah, he's also he's sort of going to lower the tone even further, but um, had a tweet that did really well at the World Cup when it um, emerged that the referees had the vanishing spray. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so yeah, we met and um, sort of bonded uh, over our love of Twitter and decided to set up a company um, working with a lot of our favorite tweeters and favorite Facebookers and sort of partnering them with the right brands and the right TV shows and stuff. And a lot of what we do now is based around sort of reactive humor and topical stuff um, such as uh, this, that we've, one of our accounts is Have I Got News For You? Um, and uh, uh, obviously we now do a lot of tweeting around the big tentpole events, the things that everyone's talking about, such as the Brits, and obviously a big moment in the Brits this year was when uh, Madonna fell over. And the reason I put some of these examples in here is it's because it's certainly not our um, finest work, but it's just to demonstrate that with Twitter, often the speed with which you get a tweet out, um, particularly around events, can be as important, if not more important sometimes, than the content itself. So within you know, a minute of her falling over, we put out these terrible tweets. Um, Madonna will be following this with I get knocked down, but I get up again. Um, sorry, Madonna's been hoofing Jaeger bombs in the Dolphins since 3 o'clock. Um, and uh, maybe she should have sung Let's Get Ready to Tumble. Again, none of our finest work, but because they were out very quickly, they all did very well. And so speed is definitely uh, of the essence on Twitter. Um, something that is also very important is if you're tweeting as a brand or a business, it's about how you manage to put your own spin on the things that everyone's talking about. So in this case, we were tweeting for HTC, and we decided to announce the goals in an actual phone, which just helped put them get them involved in the conversation, but in a way that sort of brought it back to their, their product. Um, it's really important now on social, with there's so much competition on there, there's so much noise on there, that you need to try and be original and try and stand out from the crowd and stand out in people's timelines. Here's a few examples. Um, one of our team, uh, Katya, does these drawings in 140 characters called ASCII art. So that's all done in 140 characters. That's uh, Usain Bolt during the Commonwealth Games. Um, you can also use now certain apps and certain websites that help you do different things with the text itself. So this is one account that we did for around Wimbledon. 
Um, this is something that uh, one of our team did a few uh, months ago, tweet this picture of her hand, and we're thinking, how the heck did it get 23,000 retweets? And it's only when we saw that she followed it up with this that we realized that actually when you tweeted them together, it looked like the hand was gripping hold of your timeline, which uh, is really cool, and ended up now, it's got over sort of 30,000 retweets in the end and did really well. Um, and GIFs, or GIFs as some people call them, are really important. Uh, this is one which I loved uh, that Guinness did on St. Patrick's Day, if it's gonna play. Yeah, so they filmed it in a way that looked like the Guinness was coming out of your timeline, which on St. Patrick's Day, around in the afternoon, when everyone's thinking about having a Guinness, this just sort of really does force you out there to uh, go and buy one. It was a really cool thing they did. Um, emojis are becoming another way that you can cut through the noise. This is known as 99 red balloons. I've counted them so you don't have to, but just thinking about how you can do other things to stand out. Um, and we try and think about different formats um, that you can use um, to sort of cut through. Some of them uh, I've got here. Um, every in L'Oreal Men Expert in the run up to Christmas, we did an office party tip every day uh, that sort of kept people coming back. Um, one of these formats, though, we found particular success with is quizzes. Um, tweeters and Facebookers love a quiz. I just tweet five questions as individual tweets. There's the first person to reply with all the right answers uh, wins the prize. Of the ones that we've done, BBC Ones and uh, Absolute Radios have trended. But the uh, Dolphin quiz was the first time that I got the Dolphin Pub trending, which, considering what uh, the Dolphin Pub is, was uh, quite amusing to me. Uh, I think we're probably running low on time, but I'm going to zoom through them. Um, one account that sort of has tried a few of these different formats um, is uh, Stellar Artois. We did this um, around Wimbledon, just trying out some different, it was a tweeting as Rufus the Hawk, who's a real hawk who guards center court against uh, pigeons. Um, we were just really trying to cut through. So I was doing some tweeting, asking if people wanted me to go and land on top of players' heads. Uh, we were getting into some awkward or hawkward banter with some of the uh, players, uh, doing some tweeting while swooping doing some tweeting while flying upside down, uh, and then this tweet that put a slightly different dimension on the men's singles final. Um, and it's just an example of a brand sort of letting their hair down and doing something a bit different on Twitter. Um, and yes, yeah, Stella loved it because people were tweeting that it made them go out and buy uh, booze, and uh, also because quite a few influencers tweeted about it. Um, someone give me a wave if I'm running over, because I think I might be. Um, video is becoming ever more important um, on social and on Twitter. There are lots of different ways you can use video, uh, both native video, and vines. Um, I think we're probably not going to have time for this, but I'll send it around after. But we've been doing a Twitter roundup where we take some of the people's. Video. The Magna Carta turned 800 this week, a birthday that was celebrated Sorry. in style by at Brian Bilston, who tweeted, I'm the Magna Carta, twisted Magna Carta. For those of you who don't speak Latin, Magna means great and is somewhere between Grande and Venti in Starbucks. We've been doing this every, oh, I'll come back to that. Um, we have been doing that every week, just rounding up people's funniest tweets about the biggest talking points and putting them in a native video. And I'm just gonna show you a vine that really made me laugh, but it shows sometimes it's not about any clever editing, it's just the funny little moments. This is when someone went into a toy store and uh, found out the sound that a bunch of geese were making, and he tweeted it saying uh, he found his geese, uh, his goose army. So um, I'll just very quickly zip through these. Obviously, engagement and how you reply to people and who you reply to is very important on Twitter. And how you use, sort of, if you do that creatively, it can really cut through the noise. This is one example that I loved when this guy, Immy Badman Bugty, tweeted, uh, when you're going to get the PS4 things and Moss, I don't wait no more, plus the Asian guy who works, I got better attitude, hashtag waste man. To which Argos, who uh, most brands would often respond in a very sort of po-faced way and being very serious, they chose to respond by speaking in the same sort of uh, street lingo, saying, uh, safe bad man, we're getting some more PS4 things, and within the next week, you get me, solves about the attitude, probs having a bad day, yo. Um, which ended up getting over 9,000 retweets and was just an example of good writing and how the right sort of engagement can cut through. Uh, and to finish, I was just going to show you some examples of how um, the right types of images can just really help you tell a story on Twitter. This is one that I loved, how just this moment of when she got slapped by a frog, but the use of the different images, you can ha now have four in one tweet, really help it cut through. And then this, one of my favorite ever tweets, uh, when this person's granddad uh, got a bit confused in the uh, photo booth. <laughs> and on that note of storytelling, I will leave you with some big colorful hashtags. Be creative, try something a bit different, uh, and be courageous, and that is me. Thank you very much.